And remember this that what God has told us in the Quran and his prophet has also explained that you would be answered or you'll be held questionable. You'll be questioned for what you believe, not what people believe. So if you're not satisfied with certain things and you, you would not, God would not accept this answer from you. Well, God, I did this because my mom said I, I should do this or I did this because my dad said this because God is not going to accept your mom and dad's answer. He would like to know what you think and why did you not act on your own thinking? So just to make this note that become critical thinkers, uh, it's not that uh, you should criticize for the sake of criticism. It's just that whenever there is a question in your mind, maybe it arises from your, in your own mind and maybe it could be that other people raise this question to you. Yeah, on both occasions, you should go and try to find out the answer because you see, uh, these answers, what one day would be asked by your own self, maybe by your own children when you grow up. As individuals, as human beings, one of the greatest distinctions that we have uh, as human beings is that we have the power to think. We can use our intellect, we can use our common sense. And we must realize that intellect and common sense is one of the greatest gifts of God. It tells us a lot of things. It tells us what we are. It tells us the right from wrong. Our own inner self is equipped to find out what right and wrong are. And that's something which we find in ourselves is called conscience. So conscience is something which tells you a lot. You don't need to go to any religious person to find out what right and wrong are because God says that what righteousness and wrongdoing are, they are ingrained in human nature. They are innately found in yourselves. You know what, what right is, you know what wrong is. And when you do something wrong, you have that bad feeling in your conscience. So uh, the, the purpose here is, as I said, is that we human beings have a very, very special uh, ability that makes us or sets us apart from animals and other life forms. And that is the ability to think. We should be thinking individuals. And when I take a look at the uh, intellectual history of mankind, I find that one of the things that we need to understand is that we should divide our thinking ability into three broad parts. Our thinking ability, or I would say into three phases. So the first is called reflective thinking. Reflective thinking means that you, when you, whenever you get a certain data, you transfer it into your mind and you start thinking about it. You, when you're told something that something is happening, you register it, you give it a thought. It's not that you just pass away over it. For example, events which are happening today in the world, we are passing through testing times because of this COVID and we are witnessing that uh, huge revolution against racism. So you see, these are, this is, these are pieces of data. They come, out, they come and they stuck, uh, stick together in our minds. And what we do is that we tend to reflect on them. And when we reflect on them, of course, certain questions arise that why, how, why should this happen? Why is this cruelty going on? And why is it that God sends so much pestilence, so much uh, earthquakes maybe, or tsunamis or Katrinas, which destroy everyone or uh, gives people this uh, feeling that they are not being looked after. So, as I said, the first thing that should register in your minds whenever you witness something very different in, in, your, in your era is this reflective thinking. You reflect, you deliberate. This is the first step. And then the st second step is what I call critical thinking, and which actually is the topic that, uh, of this first segment. Critical thinking is that you analyze the data and you criticize it and you would like to know the why and the how about it. So for example, uh, why does God do this? Is there a God? And we know that there is this uh, suffering problem which has prompted many people who are atheists, many people who are agnostics uh, to disbelieve in God or to think that there should be no God because if there is a God and he's merciful, then where is he? So you see, the second aspect that should come to your mind or to every thinking mind is why. Why does this happen? So whenever this question comes to your mind about anything, this means that you are a critical thinker. It's, it, it means that you would like, uh, like to find out the answers to whatever came into your mind. Remember, the first step was reflective thinking in which you were plainly gathering data and trying to simulate it, trying to bring it together. And then the next step was that the, that data bothered you so much. It, it worked so much passion in you that you want, wanted to find out at why is this thing happening? 
why is God doing this? So that is what I call the second stage in which you find out or you try to find out the answers to these very, very nagging questions. And hence you enter the realm of critical thinking. And then what you do is that you try to find out an answer. Maybe you get convinced from answers which are already floating around you. So you ask your father, you ask your mother, you maybe ask your teacher that why is this happening? Why, why so? Why is it that only poor people are being tested? Why is it that the rich, they just get away with a lot of things that they do? Now, as I said, remember that we have three steps of thinking. One was reflective thinking in which you just gather data and start thinking about it. The other is critical thinking, which we're just talking about, in which you analyze this data, you're not satisfied with some of the answers, you search for the answers, and what happens is that some of the prevailing answers satisfies you, and that's it. So you, you write that answer in your mind and you're satisfied. But then there's a third step, and that relates to issues in which you're not satisfied. I mean, maybe you have a lot of questions in mind, you, you started to gather that data, you reflected on it, you criticized it, you critically evaluated it, and none of the prevailing answers satisfied you. And you got, you said, oh well, nothing doing. Whatever you are saying, is, is, or whatever I'm being told, does not satisfy myself. Now comes the third part, and that is creative thinking. So what you do is, you present, or you try to present your own solution to that problem. And from a reflective thinker, to a critical thinker, you become a creative thinker. You now start to give a new dimension in life. We go through reflective thinking, we go through critical thinking, and ultimately we end up in that creative thinking mode by giving a new expression to the answers given earlier. So this is what I call this process of thinking in which all of you as young people must immerse yourselves in. Don't take things for granted. Whenever your parents tell you something in the name of religion maybe, or in the name of society, or in any popular uh, thing that goes on in the name of either science or religion, you must question it. If you question it, you'll find out that more often than not, a lot of things that are prevailing in the society, they have absolutely no basis. And they are merely popular beliefs that have been carried out or they have been carried down by our parents or by the society at large and they have lacked this analysis. So if just one thing you are able to grasp from this first segment that from today onwards I am not going to take, take things for granted. I am going to question everything. If my mom tells me to fast 30 days a, a year, a, a, a month in, in one year, I will ask her why. Why did, why did our religion tell us to fast? Why does it try to make us starve for let's say 16 or 17 hours, what's the point behind it? Why does God ask us to pray five times a day? I mean, once would have been enough. And why is it that uh, we are told that we must eat halal food? Well, animal is an animal. We can just uh, slaughter it in any way we would like. So you see, this is what belongs to the realm of religion. I, I highlight religion because you see, in other realms, in science, in social sciences, you are already a critical thinker because the way those sciences are taught to you, they are taught in a critical fashion and whenever you question it, it is encouraged and you get an answer or maybe you go and research into it. But as far as religion is concerned, there is this huge lag in which this critical thinking element and this creative thinking element is missing. So my uh, request to all of you would be that from today onwards, become alert. Anything which bothers you, anything which, which tells you that something is not right, which is being presented. I'm not going to accept it or maybe I'm just going to put it through my lens of uh, evaluation. I'm, I'm going to question it and I'm only going to believe it if I'm satisfied.